is far too hot to record a normal video today. So I figured as my space is a little bit of a shit tip, we're gonna tidy it up and I'm gonna answer some of your burning hobby questions. I put a post out on both Instagram and Twitter to ask you guys what your hobby questions are. And as we go through the video, we're gonna answer these. This is either gonna be absolutely amazing or an absolute f***ing train wreck. We'll see how it goes. Now, I was expecting to get this question. Uh, Treasy has asked me, what's it like having Luke as a boss slash work colleague? It's interesting. Um, there is never a dull moment. Work is generally pretty much always fun. I mean, I enjoy the job as it is. I enjoy filming, I enjoy editing, I enjoy painting. Working with Luke, who I consider to be one of my best friends, don't tell him I said that, is really, really fun. It is. It, it doesn't feel like work. It's been really weird. All through since leaving school, I've worked all kinds of different jobs, some that I've loved, some that I've hated. Most of them I've been fairly just, I don't care. Um, they have just been jobs. This is the first time that I've done a job that is something that I'm really, really into and that I really, really enjoy. And getting to do that with one of my best mates is, yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. It is a good feeling. So we've had a few questions over on Patreon as well. The first of these is from Mr. Andy Allen, who asked, if I was to do Horace Heresy, what Legion would I do and why? The answer to that is I would do the Alpha Legion. Um, everyone might expect me to say Salamanders because they are my favorite chapter and Legion, uh, but I paint that many Salamanders already for 40K that I feel like I'd want to do something different. And I, I've always loved the aesthetic, the sort of color scheme for Alpha Legion. And there's a really cool Turbo Dark paint called Twin Suns, which is perfect for Alpha Legion, so I think I'd do them. The next question is from Richard Smith, who is asking, what Turbo Dark paints are there available that would look good on his Blood Knights, for the red especially? So there are two that spring to mind. There is Box Wine and there is Red Rum. Both of these look absolutely fantastic. They're both really, really nice colors, so I'd go with either one of those two. The next question is from Peter Gronfeldt, who's asking if I would ever consider, or if I have ever considered doing live classes, whether that's for school or clubs or things like that. It is something that I've thought about in the past, and it is something that I definitely want to do at some point in the future. The only issue that I've got is sort of when and where. I definitely think that I would be better aiming it at a kids club or a sort of youth gaming group because that is where I think I would be best applied. I am not the most amazing painter, so I don't really think that I would benefit anyone else by doing a, a, a proper painting class, as it were. But definitely something for uh, younger people, or people just getting into the hobby, like a beginner's class, I think, is something that I'd definitely like to do to encourage that sort of community side of things. Matthew Ian on Instagram has asked how I would paint like smoke and fire effects. Do I go dark to light or light to dark? I prefer to go sort of dark to light because that's generally how I paint everything. I start off, if I'm painting flames like on my Salamander shoulder pads, for example, I'd paint those by putting in the darker reds and then working my way down and down and down until I'm at the bright white yellow down at the bottom of the flames. I was painting like a 3D flame, like the one on the Amazing Spider-Man model for Model Crisis Protocol. What I would do is I would start out by painting in the flame bits, like the glowing bits in the recesses. And then what I'd do is I would go over and dry brush sort of greys and a little bit of black on the extremities because it's the middle of the explosion that is the brightest and then the dust and the smoke go outwards. So that is the way around that I would do that if that makes sense. Next up, we've got a question from Dalbonix who says, when is it too hot to use a wet palette? Now, it's too hot now. Casual Army Painter has asked, how I come up with color schemes and projects that feel truly my own and not just a copy of someone else's work. This one was surprisingly easy and also difficult to answer. Um, I sort of just get color schemes from everywhere. I, I, everything that I look at, everything I see, I see interesting color combinations that I think, oh, that would work on this type of model. Sometimes I get inspired by what other people have done, but then I decide to do my own twist on things, like I did with the Catan Shards recently. The Deceiver and the Nightbringer are both painted up in their traditional sort of colours, but I use Turbo Dog paints to add a little bit of my own variety, my own twist onto it, so it's a bit of a colour shifting on the main colours rather than just 
plain colours, if that makes sense. So it's just about putting your own spin on things and you've nothing wrong with getting inspired by what other people have done and taking that and then just doing your own thing with it. Cat Cave Hobbies has asked that if I'm a brush licker, I am, what is my favourite flavour of paint? Now, this is a funny question because back in the olden days when I was younger and I used to hang out in Games Workshop all day, we all swore that there was a particular brown paint that Citadel did at the time that tasted like chocolate. So I'm going to say that one. BFG Wargaming has asked, what is my favourite model that I have built and painted? This is an easy answer. The favourite model that I've ever painted has to be my Void Dragon model for my Necrons. It is such a lovely model, There's so much opportunity on there for loads of cool different effects. I had an absolute blast painting that and it's one of my favourite paint jobs that I've done in recent times, if not ever. Greg Bond has asked on Twitter, what was my first miniature and do I still have it? The answer to both those questions is yes. No, wait, one of those questions. The answer to one of those questions is yes, I do still have the model. And in answer to the other question, it's one of the last Alliance Elves that you got with the old Lord of the Rings magazine, way, way back, early 2000s. Lord of the Rings, they did a part work magazine where you got Elves, Goblins, I think Frodo was like issue three or four or something. I started out in the hobby properly with that magazine. So these elves are actually some of the first models that I ever painted. Not47 has asked, do I have any hobby goals or things that I want to have a go at? For me, it's more about just continuing to grow the sort of community that I've got. I'm really, really happy with what I'm doing on YouTube, on Discord, on Instagram, Twitter, and all these places in adding a bit of positivity into the hobby. In terms of my actual hobby, like painting and stuff, I just want to carry on improving on doing what I'm doing. I am constantly learning from either trying things, from watching tutorials, from watching other YouTubers, from looking on Instagram for inspiration for art, colors and color schemes and things like that. So I just want to carry on growing and expanding my knowledge base, trying new things, trying things like non-metallic metal and doing competition entries and just expanding my horizons and just carrying on enjoying the hobby. That's what it's all about, right? The Salton Trees on Instagram actually responded to the post uh, four times and asked four different questions. So we're gonna go through them and give answers to all four. So number one, why aren't you into Necromunda? No real reason, I just haven't got into it. I think the main thing is that it's another game system that came along. I already have enough game systems that I don't get to play as it is. So I didn't really need to add to another one. The next question is, do you think Games Workshop is right to create false scarcity, scarcity, scarcity? Scarcity, by making so many things limited for a few weeks. Now, it depends what you mean by this. If you mean things like when Curse City came out and things like that, then no. I think if you are going to make a game, make it available all the time. Don't limit stuff like that for there and then. Or if you are going to do that, you need to give a way bigger lead time because not everyone can afford to just drop that money there and then. If you're talking about the sort of commemorative and special edition models that you get for store birthdays and other big events like that, I don't mind that as much because limited edition things are a thing everywhere, not just in Games Workshop and if there weren't any limited edition things, there wouldn't be these cool collectibles that we all want to get and want to own. So I don't mind that as much. Yeah, when you miss one, it sucks, but generally they're not too bad because it's usually just a one random model and it's not particularly necessary. The next question is, are the Dirty Down Rust effects actually that good or are they successful because of their easy of use? Now, I've seen a few of my friends use these. So I've seen in-person results from these and they do look really, really cool and they are really easy to literally just slap it on and it's done. I've never actually used any myself, so I can't say 100%. But from secondhand experiences through friends and through seeing all the videos on YouTube and things like that, I'm going to say that yes, they are pretty good and they're easy to use. I think, to be honest, out of a bottle, they are probably one of the best looking rust effects that I've seen. So, yeah. And the last question is Star Wars or Star Trek? Uh, that's easy. It's Star Wars all the time. I do love Star Trek. I do love me some Star Trek, especially next generation. But I would have to say Star Wars. Tony Courtney over on Instagram has asked Grimdark or Evia Metal. I'm assuming he means which would I prefer to paint in or which do I prefer to paint with. The answer is neither really. I, I'm not a fan of edge highlighting everything to within an inch of its life like Evia Metal is. But at the same time, I do like to add a bit of weathering and grime and dirt and stuff like that to my miniatures rather than having them super clean like the Evia Metal style. But I don't think I am 
super in on having everything caked in sludge. So I fall somewhere in the middle. I like to paint nice, bright, vibrant color schemes on my miniatures and add a little bit of grime, a little bit of rust and stuff like that, but not too much. So I don't think my models would particularly fall into the grimdark category, but they definitely don't fall into the heavier metal. So somewhere in between, I guess. Nice, nice, happy medium. When you're gonna buy a Manta like all the other content creators, um, when I earn enough money that I can buy a Manta and it not have a massive impact on my finances. <laughs> Your five favorite go-to paints, non-metallic. Uh, I would say anything bright, like a lime, bright lime green, yellow green. Uh, magenta is always a good one. Turquoise is a good one. Uh, I like the Procrill uh, pale yellow. I think it's called either pale yellow or ice yellow or something like that. Uh, that's a really nice color. Uh, and then you can't go wrong with a good solid black paint for all those base rims. Is that something that can strip metal and resin models of paint? Funny you should say that, I have actually got a video on that. Link in the top right hand corner and down below in the description. Would you ever try out historical war games? Historical war games are not really something that I'm super interested in, if I'm completely honest. I like painting sci-fi and fantasy stuff because I like being able to paint stuff that's different to real life. Historical stuff, it's just lots of greys and greens and browns, and that's it. So it's not particularly interesting, personally, to paint, but I'm never gonna say never. Square or round bases, round bases, all the time. This one's a good one, I like this one. What is the best pepper army? The best pepper army are the spicy black pepper armies. I don't really think you can get them anymore. If you can, I don't know where. If you know, let me know. Um, if you can't get those, I would say the red ones. Red ones are definitely best. I know this video has been a little bit different, but I hope you've enjoyed it all the same. If you have, leave us a like, leave us a comment and subscribe if you are new. If you want to help support the channel, there's our affiliate links down below in the description and the link for our Patreon account as well. Big thanks to all the people that are on our Patreon. You guys are absolutely amazing. That's going to do it for me. I'm going to have a cold shower and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your hobby.